So the field of uh, ovarian cancer, I think, has undergone um, a rebirth of, of, in a way because of the um, the ability, I think, for, for pharmaceutical companies and for investigators to see a path forward for development of new drugs. Um, and this has come, I think, uh, in concert with working with the FDA to identify endpoints that are relevant for patients and endpoints that are relevant for clinical trials that allowed us to reach these, um, you know, to develop these trials in a way that we would have endpoints that would be reachable and uh, meaningful for patients in a time frame that was uh, acceptable to, to industry and our industry partners. So um, with that came, uh, you know, initially the, the uh, approval, accelerated approval of Olaparib in ovarian cancer, and that kind of launched a whole cascade of, of development strategies that have launched these new drugs um, and new drug combinations as a way of expanding the portfolio of patients with recurrent ovarian cancer. So, um, so with the PARP inhibitors, you know, obviously that was a, a big win for us. Uh, that's been expanded into multiple different settings. So initially just as treatment for highly selected group of patients, uh, namely those with a BRCA mutation in the germline, now is expanded to both somatic and BRCA, HRD, and then in the, in the settings of our um, uh, recurrent platinum sensitive space, we have three drugs approved for all comers if they respond to a platinum drug. So that's been very nice and a nice, you know, development in a relatively short period of time, you know, coming just about in the last um, uh, five years or so. The, um, I think from there, uh, because of that kind of precedent, there's been a lot of new drugs that have entered into the, into the market. Um, some of these are, are falling along the lines of other biologicals. Um, obviously, we have drugs like uh, bevacizumab that have continued to develop. Those combinations now are starting to enter into the domain. Um, and so we're seeing several trials now being done with at least the PARP you know, antiangiogenesis space. And there's been a couple of those antiangiogenesis inhibitors, which are in active investigation right now. And then um, we also have, you know, uh, drug development down the, the path of uh, chemotherapy, so there's some new chemotherapy agents, and some of the most exciting of those are drugs that are using um, a more targeted or directed approach. We call those uh, antibody or antigen drug conjugates, um, and certainly mervituximab is a, one of those in most, uh, in most uh, uh, development uh, using the folate receptor alpha expression on uh, many solid tumor cells uh, to direct this chemotherapy into the cancer cell. It's kind of a smart bomb approach. And then we have, um, uh, you know, of course, immunotherapy, which is obviously very, uh, very high interest on a lot of people, um, a lot of different solid tumor types. And so our, our hope is that we can figure out a way to make uh, these therapies work in ovarian cancer. So um, uh, it, we know that the single agents are, are, are struggling. So now our strategy is to figure out what kind of partners or what kind of patients these drugs might work the best in. And so um, uh, right now there's multiple, multiple trials, both in the frontline and the recurrent setting and in maintenance uh, where these drugs, these immunotherapeutics are being combined with these other exciting elements that I just mentioned. So, so it's very exciting, you know, to have all of this going on at one time.